Hey all, it's Andrew Couch here. And in this Tidy Tuesday video, we're actually not gonna look at the weekly Tidy Tuesday data set, um, which I believe is uh, volcano eruptions. Instead, um, we're actually gonna look at some UFC data because recently there's been a UFC card that happened on Saturday. And I thought it'd be interesting to implement an ELO rating system. So ELO rating system is basically, um, it originated from chess where it was a way to basically give people tiers. So when you beat someone, you would gain points. If you lose against someone, you'll lose points. And it's kind of a good way to like rank teams and how they um, compare up to each other and how they upset um, each other. So um, 538 um, uses, I guess, their ELO rankings, especially for like their uh, NBA um, and NFL um, predictions. And they kind of have a nice like high level article about how they do it. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to kind of implement a ELO system into UFC fighters. So like which fighter had the most upsets, who's the best fighter um, in each weight class due to their ELO rating system. And the actual formula for ELO is pretty simple. Um, it's kind of like, a, I think like a logistic kind of formula. However, um, I didn't really feel, I. I didn't feel like it'd be a good video for me to implement that because I'm not really a great programmer. I'm more into the data analysis stuff. So I looked up an ELO package and there actually is an ELO package, which will basically do it for us. And it's, it's pretty basic. It, it's kind of like a, um, your typical formula. So it's like win for team A and they use team A plus um, team B and they give it the, the data set with a specific K factor. Um, so we're gonna do that. Um, I recommend just downloading this book or you can probably look on it on my Tidy Tuesday repo. Um, one thing that we should be looking at is, so for 538, they use a K of 20. And this basically shows how quickly the ratings react to new games. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a R markdown file. I'll, I'll put this into a uh, GitHub document. I'm gonna make sure to go to my Tidy Tuesday. I'm gonna set as working directory. Okay. So I'm gonna call this Tidy Tuesday uh, UFC ELO. Okay. Uh, move that. Library, Tidyverse. And when we look at the actual, um, uh, uh, what is it called? A kernel from Kaggle. Um, we're just going to use the data.csv, which is like the cleaned up data set. Um, so yeah, we're just going to put that in. Uh, okay, let's do that. So df read.csv, and it's called data.csv. So we're going to do that. Um, first, we're going to look at the column names. And if we see here, this is kind of like a thing you'd probably find in an Excel style format where it's just it's not in a tidy format as basically it's basically two tables an opponent and a fighter table combined like C bind together. Um, so we're going to have to clean this up. Uh, even though, um, the ELO package actually wants it in this format where it just wants the fighter, uh, fighter, a fighter B and the actual results, but we want to use this. We want to convert this into a tidy format just because it's a tidy Tuesday and it'll be probably easier for future analysis. So if you wanted to do um, uh, more charts or dashboards, it'd probably be easier to put in a tidy format. Okay, so if you notice, um, there's two sets of features basically, um, there, where it's an R and a B, which is I think the red and the blue corner. So we're gonna make a red DF and a blue DF, right? So that way we'll just have them kind of split. Okay. So first we're going to figure out a way to select all of the red corners attributes or features. So one cool way we can do this is just do the select at function. Okay. So we're going to select at any vars or variables that starts with R. Okay. So when we do that, we can see, okay, we get a lot of that. We have all that stuff. Um, and we're just going to do column names first, just so we can kind of get a better look at to what we need. Okay. So we have 
what we need for the that's very specific to the R. However, uh, we also want to get the uh, the winner or the result of it. Okay, so what we're also going to do is um, we're going to find vars or variables that starts with R, and we're also going to grab um, the variable that has the word winner in it. Okay, so now we have winner. Cool. Um, let's see else. What do, what do we need to do? Um, so once we have these these columns, we don't really want uh, these R underscores, right? Because we're going to essentially R bind them or just like kind of stack the red and the blue corner into the same data set. So what we need to do is first uh, rename all these um, feature, all these uh, variables. And we can do the rename all. And since we know that all of these variables have the, um, the string R underscore, we're just going to remove that string from it. Okay. So that's just a simple function and we're going to use the dot funds or dot function. And this is basically a helper function for it. So function X, and then, you know, it's the classic STR replace the string that we're going to be implementing is the column name, which in this case is going to be called X. The pattern will be R underscore and the replacement will be just a, a blank space. Okay. So you see that we dropped everything that we needed. Okay. Boom. Um, additionally, what we need to do is kind of have like a match, a match ID, because, um, if we look at this, um, it's fighter versus fighter B, but we don't actually have a match. Um, and we could use say, uh, let's see here. We could use something else. Like, um, I think we could use a date. Where's date at? Column names. We could use date as it, but I don't think that's a great idea. Um, I don't, especially since a date will be kind of different for each person. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create our own, um, primary key or like match ID. And in this case, we're just going to do uh, a mutate and say, match id equals row number okay and that's fine we can do that because um, we're basically just splitting it in half so and each row already is a unique match additionally this also solves a problem with um fighters fighting each other um having rematches with each other so we couldn't just say oh a unique id is when fighter r and fighter b are fighting together when in reality you know they might have a another fight in the future and that might cause some problems. Okay. So now that we have this, we're going to call this the RDF for the red corner. And we're going to do the same thing with the um, blue corner. Okay. And in this case, we can kind of just do this, right? Um, Cause it's, it's just doing the opposite with only B's. Okay. So we can call this BDF. Lastly, um, there, there are some features that we know are the same for every, um, for this, for each fighter's fight. For example, they have the same referee date, location, um, title bout, weight class, number of rounds, etc. Okay. So I'm going to just do a brief skim and notice that I like always have R or B on the top. So I'm going to assume that's unique to that fighter. So we're going to say. We're going to create a shared features um, kind of data set. And we'll just say select uh, referee date location, lo location, location, uh, title bout, weight class, number of rounds. In addition, what we have to do is we have to mutate and say match ID equals um, equals a uh, a uh, row number, right? So that way we can um, add them together. Technically, we could just do a C bind with the shared features. However, um, this kind of prevents some things from getting messed up. Okay, so shared features, right? Match ID, referee, date, everything looks normal. Finally, um, we're gonna create our tidy um, data frame. But if you notice, um, if we select the RDF and select 
um, winner. It has red, blue, and, and yada, right? With the ELO package, um, they count wins as dependent on just one fighter, okay? So if you look at, let's see, where is that? Where is it? So a win is a one, a tie is a 0.5, and a loss is a zero. And wins at A is is equivalent to a, a team that home. So if team, um, if the home team wins, it's a one. The home team loses, it's a zero, which means the visitor won, right? It's kind of a degrees of freedom binary thing. So we're, what we're going to have to do is decide who are we going to say is the home team. And in this case, I'm just going to say the home team is going to be red. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is RDF. Okay. Uh, mutate. And we'll say winner equals case when. Okay. And then say winner equals red. That means it's a win. Winner equals blue. That means it's a loss. And then else or true, um, it's a 0.5 for a tie. Oops, uh, 0.5 for a tie. Okay, so we get that. And if we do the uh, uh, count winner, we can see that there are um, 1,500 losses, 83 ties, and 3470 win um, wins. Kind of odd that. Um, um, I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't know if red corner or blue corner uh, have specific um, arrangements where if you're favored, you're on the the red corner. But um, you can see that it's working at least. Okay. So we're gonna do the same thing with the. Uh, we're gonna do actually not the same thing with the blue corner, because um, in this case, if the blue corner. Um, if the blue corner, uh, um, if winner equals red for the blue corner, that means they lost, right? Um, so we're going to just switch it around. Okay. So the, now we fix that. And finally, what we're, we're going to do is we're going to R bind this. So we're going to basically stack them together. Uh, so I'm going to copy this thing in. Copy this guy in. Uh, what the? Oops. Okay. Oh. Uh, copy this guy in. Okay. And now we stack them together. Lastly, since now we have basically a fighter table. So that this is Henry Cejudo, Cejudo's um, stats for this fight. So all this stuff, you know, the fight data for that specific match, whether he won or not, but we want to have, you know, the date, all the date, the refer referee location, weight class, number of rounds, stuff like that. So we're going to do a left join shared features by equals match ID. Okay. So if we go back right here, we have that, we have our date and stuff like that. Okay, so we're gonna call this the tidy df because it has all this stuff that we needed. Um, let's see what else do we need to do. Yeah, I think it has everything we needed, so we're gonna do that. Tidy df column names just to make sure everything looks good. Yeah, I think everything looks great. Okay, and. I'm not really going to go too much into this. I just kind of want to implement the ELO system and uh, um, maybe we'll look at this data set again later, but let's see here. Let's go on. So now since we have uh, our tidy data frame, um, oops, tidy. we need to basically untidy it um, for uh, let's see for the uh, ELO, right? So we can do it in two ways. On one hand, we could just not use our tidy data frame and just use this, our DF right here. Or we could, uh, we could just do the, uh, 
uh, use the actual tight day frame. I think what I'm going to do is, let's see here. I think I'm just going to do it with the tidy day frame because it'll be easier, right? So we already have our clean names. We can just say select, this will be fighter, um, fighter, um, winner, match ID, and then let's do weight class and date, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a left join using the same tidy day frame, but instead we're gonna select fighter um, and match ID, right? And we'll join it by, oops, by equals match ID. Okay, so right here we have fighter, winner, match ID, yada, yada. Notice how fighter.x, fighter.y, and we can see a problem here where we have the same fighter, right? See how it's Henry Cejudo versus Henry Cejudo? That can't happen. So what we're going to say is we're going to first rename. Um, we'll say fighter equals fighter uh, dot X. Um, and then we'll say opponent equals fighter dot Y, right? And then actually, and then we're going to do a filter where fighter cannot equal uh, the opponent. There you go. So now we have 10,000 rows of our fighter and stuff like that. And just to do a sanity check, DF, dim, okay. What else did we do? Uh, DF, dim, yeah, that makes sense. Wait, does that make sense? Just set. Uh, and then let's see, counts. Uh, actually, oh, I got an idea. And then it's going to do uh, arrange by match ID. Okay, right here. So we still have, look at this. That's what I was thinking. Um, it didn't make any sense. So we can see how we have duplicate fighters. Because even though they're fighting different people, these guys are swapped with each other. Okay. So one way to do this is we're just going to do a, a group by um, match ID, right? So we're going to group by each match ID and we're just going to select the first one. Okay. And we're going to ungroup it. And now if we do it, it'll be 5144. Okay. And we're going to call this the ELO data frame. Uh, yeah. ELO DF. So now that we have our ELO data frame, we can actually use the ELO package. So ELO. And then I, when I was testing the ELO package, I also found that the broom package works with it. So that's all we're gonna do. So if we do um, the ELO package, it doesn't really have that many um, commands. So you can do some tweakings to it, but in reality, it doesn't really have too much stuff. So it just has a little fake data set, um, scores, rankings, players, stuff like that. Um, we're just gonna use the ELO run because this basically simulates the actual um, games that happen. Okay, in this case, we're gonna um, use winner and it'll be fighter plus opponent. And you have to specify a K for it. So we'll say K equals 20 because if we look at the 538 package, a uh, 538 article, they said that they use a K of 20. Um, and they say, this is higher than we expected. It is in the same range as K was used for NFL and international soccer. So for all three sports, they basically use the same K. Um, now, I don't think soccer, I, I don't think UFC um, is a similar sport to those sports, but it's a good baseline at least. So, and then we give it a data set. So EODF, we do it. So it creates an object EO.run. Um, and we're going to call this EO. So now what we're going to do is actually going to come with this. So we're going to say, uh, and, and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually rank the teams. So we're going to use the rank that teams function and it, you see that it ranks everyone. Um, so, but it puts in a kind of a bad, bad, um, way. It's like a, was it a list or whatever? Luckily, um, 
we can use the broom packages tidy function to just make it into a tidy format. See, so so it has the the ranking right here and the names right there. Oh, actually, let's see here. I totally forgot. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. It's my bad. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, I totally forgot that uh, I read a comment last week, but um, we haven't done too much yet. So we're gonna we have it zoomed in a little bit. So we have it tidied. Um, we're gonna rename. <clears throat> we're gonna rename the X to uh, ranking. So ranking Google X, and then we can just do a arrange by ranking. Okay, so what do we see here? Um, what we see is that the ELO ranking actually makes sense. So if you know about UFC stuff, you can see that John Jones and GSP are ranked very high, which um, actually um, last UFC card, um, GSP actually got inducted to the UFC Hall of Fame. So this, this is starting to make a lot of sense. Um, it's interesting that Tony Ferguson is ranked three. Uh, Demetrius, probably because he, actually, I, I bet why, uh, I bet Tony Ferguson is ranked so high is because he's he's gone on a huge win streak. Um, so he hasn't lost any ELO for a, a long time. Demetrius Johnson is pretty high, even though he doesn't fight anymore. Donald Cerrone, again, is pretty high. Um, okay, cool. So w one problem, I guess, with the uh, this ELO thing is that um, it's not accounting for these weight classes, right? So, um, John Jones will never face like, uh, Demetrius Johnson. Okay. So it's kind of hard for you to really rank them together. So what we're going to have to do is, uh, uh, we're going to have to basically do a, uh, um, we're going to have to make these EO rankings for each weight class. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. EO DF. Um, I'm trying to think the best way to do this. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll create a function to find the top, uh, uh, to, to find, yeah, to basically do this, to find the top 10 ranked people, ranked fighters for each weight class. Okay. So that's what we're going to say. We're going to say ELO top, um, function data. And we're just going to put this into this. Uh, we'll call this results. Uh, yeah. And then we'll say rank.teams results tidy ranking arrange. Um, and we don't even need to do the arrange. We'll say filter ranking is less than or equal to 10. So it'll return a list right here of the rankings for each weight class. Um, okay, cool. So we did that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, ELO DF. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say a uh, group by weight class. Oops, weight class. And then we're going to use the nest function. So now we have um, a, a little table of data for each weight class. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, well, let's say ranking equals, and we're going to map this function ELO top. Let's see. Okay. Map ELO top to it. So ELO, uh, we'll say map, um, and then we give it a data and a function. So we're going to input uh, this little subset of data for the weight class for each class into this function. So what it's going to say is, so for bantamweight, we're going to take the bantamweight data, find the top 10 and put it into a table. Cool. So now we have, um, a list of 10, I'm going to assume it doesn't say that, but we can unnest it. Oh yeah. We get, we got unnest. Uh, what is it? Um, let's see here. Uh, oops. Uh, what? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select uh, weight class and ranking. And we're gonna unnest. Okay. Um, I wonder if it's group still. 
Group by, okay. Ungroup. Okay, so now we have the rankings, and I'm going to say arrange by ranking and then weight class. All right, so it's a little bit. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? Uh, let's see. Results, data. Oh, there we go. So we had to do that. So we see here, we had, we had to specify data equals data. There we go. So now we have it. And this is making sense. GSP, best Walter rate, uh, welterweight. Tony Ferguson, best lightweight. John Jones, best light heavyweight. Junior Dos Santos, flyweight. Okay, yeah. Yeah, these make sense. Go to the next one. Bantamweight, number two is um, TJ Dillashaw. I'm not sure why Chris Cyber is here. I think there might be a male Chris Cyber Cyborg. Not sure why that's there. Might be a little data issue, but so that's making sense. Okay. Um, but one thing that we got we kind of need to figure out is uh how can we find the best, I guess, ELO? Right? How can we find the best ELO for um uh, for K, how can we just, uh, decide K? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, um, let's see here. We'll we'll say um, K sensitivity. So K sensitive case. I'll say sense K sense. Okay, function K. And we're basically gonna do the same thing with eagle top. However, for in this case, we're just gonna do this for the overall rankings um we can kind of specify this as like a pound for pound ranking um again we could do it on the nested data and see how that works but i think it's probably a little bit better to make it more of an overall thing instead of make it spec specify for each weight class again this is something where um it's pretty i think it's pretty subjective um but just for simplicity's sake um we're gonna do uh, for the overall thing the overall, um, um, I guess, pound for pound, best fighter or whatever. So we have this K sense um, range, and we'll say instead we're gonna do uh, filter ranking is less than equal to ten. In this case, we're gonna give it the same data frame since we don't need to do the weight class thing. So we're gonna do that, and now what we're essentially gonna do is make kind of do like a grid search. Okay, so. We'll say k rankings table k equals sequence from equals one two equals one oh one by equals ten. This thing is we're gonna make a uh, basically we're gonna test out different k's um, from like one to one hundred one by ten. So it's one eleven twenty one yada yada. Okay, and I believe with let me look at it again. So k. K, I believe the higher the K, the more sensitive um, these scores are. Okay. So if K is set too high, the ra ratings will jump around too much. K is too low, it'll it'll fail to meet the uh, actual changes. So it'll be too slow. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. So we have our we have our optimal Ks or the Ks that we want to test. Now what we're gonna do is just gonna do a simple mutate and say ranking equals map k and then k k uh sense right and then we can just do a simple uh, nest and yeah so we have our rankings i'm gonna assign it to this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna ggplot it out so ggplot um x equals names y equals K fill equals ranking plus geom tile plus chord flip. Okay. Um, we probably have to do a reorder. Let's see here. I'll just do a mutate. We'll do a group by names summarize. Uh, actually, mutate. Um, mutate average rank equals mean uh was it 
ranking ungroup and then we'll say reorder names by their average ranking average rank okay um and we'll say minus so top the person on top has the, on average the highest ranking okay so let's see here let's go down put that so what are we seeing here um so the people who we can see something so the higher the k or the more sensitive the rankings are you can see how anderson silva benefits from a highly volatile k we can see with gsp uh, a slower k means he's higher ranked and we can also see how some people just drop off of the top 10 rankings okay so when i'm looking at this i actually think the best k is probably maybe around this range um and the reason why i think that is because a lot of these people um it, it fits the most for these people who i would consider the best um there are some problems where like, i think i'm not sure if max hallway is you know the top 10 greatest fighter of all time but i think he's a great fighter so i'm not sh i'm not sure it's it's kind of subjective right um one thing that I would say is I don't think Tony Ferguson now would be considered the best fighter over, say, uh, Kamaru Usman. So with Donald Cerrone, I don't think Donald Cerrone is the best fighter. So you can see, like, oh, if I don't want Donald Cerrone as a ranked fighter or a ranked top 10 fighter of all time, I would probably want to do a higher K, right? So maybe maybe it might be actually higher K. I'm not sure. Um, you can see how Khabib, he, he, he increases with a higher K. And I think Khabib is one of the best fighters, right? So maybe maybe it might be have to it, it might have to have a higher K. Um, that kind of makes sense because with MMA and UFC, uh, it's a volatile sport where, um, in one second the uh, the champion who's been fighting seventeen fights and has never lost could get knocked out in twenty seconds. Okay, but yeah, so that's just kind of a thing just to look at how sensitivity or how K affects rankings in overall. Um, okay, so. We have all this stuff. We, we have all this like rankings. We figured out the rankings with a given K of 20 for um, each weight class. But it'd be kind of interesting to look at the actual ELO history of it, right? How ELO changes. And we, have, we actually look at our ELO, right? If we go to ELO and then we do um, kind of a, um, if we got our ELO and I think if we can, I wonder if we can tidy it. I don't think we can do it. So we have to do an as dot data frame. But it actually does show you the ELO history where it's saying team A, team B, P of A wins update. Okay, so it's like each each um each person's uh, um ELO and probability of winning. One thing that we gotta do is we gotta rename this stuff. So I'm gonna rename um, I'm not sure how to do this really fast, but we can just do it really, um, we can just do it right now. So opponent equals two, fighter prob equals three, fighter wins equal, uh, fighter, fighter wins equals, I guess, four, um, fighter, oops, ELO change equals five, uh, Component ELO change equals six fighter ELO component ELO equals oh eight and then I forgot to do equals seven. Uh, what's here? Oh, okay. So we have it renamed fighter opponent fighter prob yada yada. Okay. So how are we going to do this? Okay, we got to we need to put in a his um let's see here. Mm. Trying to figure out a way to do this. Okay, so we have the overall history of this. But we need to do is I want to find the history for each weight class where the ELO is specific for each weight class, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to call this ELO history and we're going to create this into a function pass along um data so results elo.run 
uh, winner, fighter plus opponent, and k k equals we'll say. Eh. Now that I'm looking at this, I kind of want to have a higher case. We're going to use a k of sixty. Um, k of sixty. K of sixty, and then data equals data. And now we're going to pass this thing into it. Say results results as it okay do that eodf um one thing that we got to do is we got to think how can we match um these match ids since if we notice when we do the actual elo elo D, um elo um um it we it it removes the actual uh, match IDs, right? And since we're going to be grouping it or nesting it by a uh, um, by a weight class, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of make sure that it doesn't get scrambled. So we're going to rearrange the weight class and fighter. So we're going to arrange by sort by weight class, and for every weight class, we're going to sort it by its fighters. Okay, so that way it's going to be a little in in a better order. Okay, and then we'll say group by, oops, group by weight class, and do nest, mutate, and we'll say history equals map data, and then elo history, right? And we notice that, okay, we have mismatched links for data frames because there are, you know, they're probably more bantam weights. I think catch weight isn't even a thing anymore, so if that makes sense. So it's starting to make sense. So we're gonna select a uh, weight class, history, unnest, ungroup. Cool, and we have it. Nope, see how we have, um, it's in alphabetical order by weight class and then by fighter. That's good. Um, we're actually gonna C bind. Uh, we're gonna C bind this. Uh, what is it? EODF arrange. And with EODF, we're just going to C bind the uh, uh, select. Uh, we're going to select the match ID because that's all we w really want to grab for it. So now we have the match ID for it. And what we're going to call this is uh, ELO changes. Because we want to, we're basically trying to find er the fighter's ELO change throughout uh, the, their entire uh, career, okay? So what do we need to do? Um, if we notice something, it's kind of in the non-tidy format that we don't want, right? So we're gonna have to do the same thing that we did last time where we're gonna basically separate, separate them by the fighter data and the opponent data and then combine them at the end, okay? And this is something where I technically could put it in this function, but I'm not sure if that's a good way to do it or not. It is also a kind of a one-time thing, um, but that's what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna have to do is uh, select weight class, fighter, fighter, prob, um, fighter wins, Fighter elo change, fighter elo and match ID. Okay, so this is the fighter data set. We're just gonna leave that there. And then just to reference it, I'm gonna say elo changes, select weight class, opponent, um, opponent, and then we, if you notice something, we don't have the opponent prob, right? Um, but since we know we have the fighter prob, we can just say the the complement, um, right? Complement. So like one minus it. So that's what we're gonna say. We're gonna say fighter prob again. Fighter prob. And then fighter wins, which in this case, fighter wins is is uh is isn't actually a number. It's more of like a, a category. So fighter wins means this person lost this match. Uh, so we're gonna have to change that too. Um, and then we'll say, um, 
opponent elo change and then opponent elo and then match id so there's there's some things that we can change first so we can say fighter equals opponent um and we can say fighter elo change equals that and we can say fighter elo equals that okay uh what's going on here fighter unaccepted in Fighter elo and the no, fighter elo equals opponent elo, so we have that. But we got to do some, um, just some slight changes. So we have to say mutate fighter. Oops, mutate fighter prop equals one minus fighter prop. Or that makes sense. See, we have the inverse of that. Same matches. So you have match 13, 17, 60%, 13, 17, 40%, right? And we have to do a fighter wins equals, and we'll just do a, again another case one statement and say fighter wins equals to, uh, what is it, equals, oh wait, was it equals equals? Um, I totally forgot this. Let's see here, fighter wins. Equals, yeah, there you go, That's, I was right. Okay, equals one, then they lost. Fighter wins equals zero, then they won. Um, true, then it was a draw, right? And that makes sense. So now we have that, we have this. And what we can do now is we can just see uh, R bind it. So we'll say uh, R bind, uh, and we'll kind of paste this guy in there. Uh, we'll paste this guy in there, and it works out. Finally, we have the elo change in the match ID. We can also do a left join, right, with our uh, what's it? What was it? We can uh, we can left join our our tidy data frame. And we'll say by equals, uh, by equals, and then in this case, since our t if we look at this, let's just put this in there. We need to join it. We know we have the match ID, right? But each match ID has a different fighter, right? Each each match ID has a different fighter. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to join by match ID and fighter. Additionally, what I noticed is fighter is a factor. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna put it right here. So fighter equals as a character fighter. Addition, yeah, right? Yeah, that's good. So we're gonna say tidy data frame and we're gonna join by match ID, oops, and fighter. Does that work? Yeah, that works, sweet. And one thing that um, I didn't realize this until probably like a few days ago, but you don't actually have to say match ID equals match ID. As long as they have the same column names for the two tables, you can just specify it like this. Okay. So this is our final ELO changes uh, uh, data set. Uh, oh, wait, actually, we got to do some renaming. Let's see here. So weight class, weight class dot X is changed. So we got to deselect some stuff. So select minus weight class dot Y rename weight class equals weight class dot X. Anything else going on? Not seeing anything. No, no more, no more dot X's or dot Y's. Okay. Just checking it again. Looks fine. Cool. So that's our final ELO changes. ELO changes, right? It's called ELO changes. And that. Okay. So we have our ELO changes. Each fighter has a um, has their little their attribute fighter attributes, 
um, the the match attributes, their opponent attributes for that match, um, also their fighter probability of winning, the amount of wins they had, their ego change. Okay, so that's that's a that's pretty represent. That's like a pretty you know nice uh, data set to have when doing some type of analysis. So what we can do is um, we can just filter out. Let's say um, the fighter equals, and in this case, I'm going to do a Henry Cejudo, right? Because Henry Cejudo just uh, retired. So, um, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, winner, 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 loss against John. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to GG plot this out. So date y equals fighter elo plus geom one uh what's going on here oh i bet just that i think the date so mutate date equals as dot date date cool plus geom point sweet and now we can see uh henry cejudo's or cejudo's um elo change right very nice um yeah so let's see here one cool thing about elo is that if we look at our elo changes and we kind of do like a top and e fighter elo and then n equals five we can see the top five people so right here these guys have the highest elos um regardless of fights so like each time they're getting better and better right um, what what else? How else can we do this? So we can say um, one way to do this is we, we can say a uh, um, group by a fighter um, top top n a uh, fighter fighter elo uh, and then fighter elo n equals one on group and then top end fighter elo and equals five right so that way it's saying like what was the best for every fighter we're going to use their best elo score and then out of that we're going to find who has a top um top five elo scores right so we can see it makes sense john jones brian bader i think ryan bader is probably like an old school guy so i don't know i'm not as familiar with him matt hughes jsp tony ferguson Okay, so those are top fighters. Obviously, you can use the uh, the other thing with the ELO um, top fighters. But one thing that would be interesting is since we have our ELO scores, we can also look at um, like the probabilities, okay? And since we have our ELO data set right here, um, we can also just do um, basic predictions. So if we say, um, let's see, what, what's a good head-to-head -head that we would say? Um, yeah, I got an idea. So previously in the last card, we had um, Dominic Cruz versus Henry Cejudo. So that's that's the thing. We should say, like, how how would our ELO scores fare up against the probabilities for each fighter's win, win probability, right? Like, if I wanted to bet on it and I have all this data, um, let's estimate how likely, you know, Dominic Cruz would win or uh, Henry Cejudo. So we can say predict ELO and we just got to give it a data frame. So we got to give it fighter equals, and we'll say Henry Cejudo, Hudo, and then opponent equals Domin, Domin, Dominic Cruz, right? And it gives you a probability of Henry Cejudo beating him. It gives Henry Cejudo a 52% chance of beating him. And what's interesting is Henry Cejudo did beat him, right? Cool. So that's something that's pretty cool. Like obviously John Jones and uh, GSP are in different weight classes, but you know it'd be kind of interesting to see, like, uh, could John Jones beat uh, GSP? So let's do that, right? 50 percent chance. Now, obviously they're in different weight classes, and that definitely probably has a, uh, some type of effect. However, you could definitely add that into a model, right? So you could just do 
your fighter ELO scores, right? With the weight class and then factor it in, right? Um, that, that's a pretty easy feature engineering to go there. So you could do some type of, you know, interaction effect with weight class or weight class differences and stuff like that. Cool. Um, finally, let's find out who has the bet, um, the biggest upset, right? Who had the biggest upset or what were the biggest upsets? So what we're going to do is we're going to select, we're going to find the top N and we'll say absolute fighter ego change, right? Um, and then we're going to say arrange by absolute fighter ELO change. Okay. Uh, why is it top end? Oops. And we'll say N equals, uh, five. So if we notice here, these are the same things, right? So what we're going to have to do is, uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, I got an idea. Cause see, this is probably from the same, this is from the same fight. So what we're going to have to do is, uh, let's see here. You will change. And then we'll say group by match ID slice one ungroup. And then we'll say top end absolute fighter evo change n equals five. Right, and then arrange by uh, descending order fighter, you will change. Sweet. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's let's see the actual thing. So fighter Tito Ortiz. He had a fight probability of 7% of winning. Nate Diaz had a 14% chance of winning, stuff like that. Um, one thing that I probably would want is say, let's select uh, match ID um, and then like uh, left join with, I guess, Evo DF. So that way we have, we have a little better representative, you know, a cleaner format. Okay, cool. Sweet. Um, yeah, so this was basically the uh, UFC data set. Um, you know, we just kind of went over, you know, kind of how to use these kind of uh, functions, helper functions, and how to basically use them to do a grid search, um, use the mapping for it, and kind of also learn more about um, and having fun with like ELO and its applications in sports. So yeah, um, hopefully I'll see you guys next week and uh, tidy on.